Well, hey guys, and welcome to the install bay. Today, we have a special one for you. Let's take a look. We have a Toyota Tundra. That's right, the brand new. And what's unique about this is if you get the JBL system, it comes with a three-way set in the front. What do I mean by a three-way set? So when we're talking about speakers, a three-way set means we have a tweeter, we have a mid-range, and we have a mid-base. Now in previous years, the JBL system and even the standard system came with a tweeter. It wasn't located here, it was located up here in the dash. And then of course, the mid-base down in the door was just a two-way set, it had two speakers. The newer version doesn't though, which means this opens up a huge possibility for us to put in better speakers. A three-way component set. There's a ton of manufacturers out there making them, but one of the most popular ones for sure is Focal. Focal makes a ton of different three-way options for you starting at access you have flax you have k2s you have utopia so there's a ton to choose from there now that's not to say they're the only ones that make them but that's who we're going to focus on today because that's what this customer has chosen they've gone ahead and picked the focal flax expert ps 165 f3s let's open it up and take a look and see what you get in the box now at the bottom here, you'll see these guys. These are the crossovers. Now the crossover's job is to make sure that each speaker is playing the frequencies that they're designed to play. So on here, you're gonna have your input, woofer output, your mid output, and your tweeter output. Each one of these is designed to optimize the performance of the speaker. So for example, you don't want your tweeter to play the sound that the mid range or the mid bass is playing, because you could blow it. The same is true for the mid range. Now this set obviously comes with two tweeters. The grill does come off. Off, stuck on there by the magnet. We're gonna leave those on there till the very end to see if we need to remove these or not. It comes with the three and a half inch mid-range. They're really sexy, I'm not gonna lie. But then of course it comes with the six and a half inch mid-base. Now we're also gonna do a sound treatment on the door in this one. We're gonna be using some Roadkill Stealth, which is nice because it's black as well as we're also gonna be using the fast rings. So we'll explain these as we get to that part of the install. So our plan today is to take you through the process of pulling out and replacing the factory ones with these aftermarket three-way sets because it's not a simple drop in, here you go, yay. Plus at the end, we'll also touch on how we're gonna amplify these because you will need an aftermarket amplifier. The factory will not be enough to move these guys. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? For the dash, we wanna go ahead and remove this grill. To do that, we're gonna use our vinyl pry tool. Now there's just a couple clips along the side here. Now the grill hinges from the back so it will lift up and then pull forward. It has these two little tabs right here. Once you get the grill off there's two 10 millimeter bolts here and here that will allow you to remove the speaker and then these clips here they like to stick every now and then. It's easier to get them out once you've removed the speaker. You can push them through, put your hand underneath and grab them. Always remove and put your clips on as you're working on it. Don't wait till the end because you might forget it or it might get lost or knocked in or something like that. All right, so now we have our speaker out of the dash and as you can see this one has a cool four pin plug on it. The reason why it has that is because they actually loop the tweeter in the mid range on one channel. In this, the JBL amplifier doesn't have six channels of audio for the front, it only has four. That means we're gonna actually be running new wires to these mid range because the crossover, remember, has a tweeter, a mid, and a mid base. So we need to have a wire for each speaker. The easiest one in this equation is to run to the dash. Otherwise, you have to try to go through the boot in the door, which can be difficult at times. What does that mean for us? Well, I tell you what, let's head over to the bench. So this plug is designed to loop the two. The loop that I was referring to, what we want to do is go ahead and cut these right here. Then we're going to go ahead and put some shrink wrap over these ends. Now we can plug this back in the car and that'll retain that tweeter wiring from the factory amplifier. So let's take a look at the speaker we took out versus the speaker we're gonna put in and compare the two. The one we're gonna put in is a little bigger. I mean, with the exception of these little wings that stay off, it's definitely a bigger speaker. And also it's a little taller, a little thicker. What that means is that this grill where this hole is, is gonna have an issue because as you can see, it rises up out. We need to remove all of this. It would be 
really easy to go ahead and take a grinder and sand this all down. The problem with doing that is it's gonna fill in all these little holes and you gotta sit there and pick all that stuff out. It's a pain in the butt. What we found works really good is a set of flush cutters and you're just gonna painstakingly take your time and remove all this stuff one little piece at a time. So start in the middle, just kind of work your way through it. Now, when you're cutting this, it is good to wear eye protection because these things like to fly off and you don't wanna get hit in the eye. Now, once you get this area all cleaned off, you can then use the actual grinder to go in and remove these little dots that are gonna be in the way also. We also need to trim this area down here between this clip and this clip. So the prep work on this panel is all done. You wanna go ahead and do the same exact prep work you did on this one to the driver's side as well. Now let's go ahead and get into the car and see what we need to do to manipulate that so that we can get this in. The first thing we wanna do is remove these two metal clips here and here, they're in the way. So to do that, we're gonna use this little flathead screwdriver right here. Just kinda of reach in and push down the back side of it. On the back side is these little teeth that are stuck up into plastic, so we want to push those down and then slide it out. And there we go. So now we'll go ahead and set the speaker in there. What we want to do is push it as far this way as possible. In the back, you can kind of tip the woofer in and it'll hit this back piece of plastic. And then we want to take a marker and just kind of trace around the basket. So what we end up with is this line right here. We have to remove all this inside area right here. Now to do this, we're gonna go ahead and use this angled grinder here. Just be super careful. Put some kind of protection on the dash and hold on to it with both hands. Now once you get it properly grinded, the speaker should go ahead and fit inside the hole. There's nothing that should be touching here. We're gonna build a bracket that's gonna actually attach it, but we wanna make sure this sits flush inside of here first. So what we need to do now that we have the hole big enough for this to fit through it is make a mount that mounts it from the top. We're gonna to use the factory grill as a template. So the idea is it needs to sit and then have two little arms like this that come off, but we're going to put it in through the top and attach it. This is the perfect shape. We're not gonna be mounting it from the bottom and up because we want it to stay flush with that panel. This will allow us to do that. So we're actually gonna router this out on some plastic, kind of a hybrid between these two, where it's gonna be bigger than this, but still have two wings that we can screw in. And we don't need really thick plastic, so we're just gonna use eighth inch for this. Now, anytime we make something that we're gonna use maybe over and over again, we'll go ahead and make it out of this white material here, and then we'll make it a little thicker than we needed so that we can router as many of them as we want. Now we need our wings to stick out just a little bit further than these do, so we're gonna take some quarter inch and attach them here for this routered shape. Now we're gonna take this over to the router. We really don't need these indentions, so we're gonna skip over those while we're routering it. But this is the basic shape that we want, and then we can fine tune it once we get this done. So this is the basic shape that we're looking for. We're gonna go ahead and round these ends a little bit and then we'll do some test fitting. All right, so we did a quick test fitting in the dash and we found out that this part here is too thick. So we've gone ahead and mounted our speaker in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna thin out this sidewall. But if you are trying to figure out what I meant by mounting it from the bottom, this is essentially what we're going to do. Now we can go ahead and retest fit it. So with the speaker mounted into the bracket, we can test fit it. Those little left and right wings are what we're gonna use to screw it down. But as you can see, it is mounted flush with the panel. Now all we need to do is go ahead and router off two more of these out of some eighth inch. So now we have the two speakers with the two mounts. What we wanna do is line these up, flip them over, drill our holes, and then screw them in from the bottom so that they're mounted like this. All right, so we have both the speakers mounted in their brackets. Now we'll go ahead and set one in the car, figure out where our holes need to be drilled here, and then this mount will be all set and ready to go. All right, we have the speaker. We notched it just a little bit here, and then we found that we could drill a hole here and a hole on the outside here, and that allow us to screw it in there 
and there. What we want to do first though is we're going to go ahead and wire this guy up and we're going to dump a wire down here into the kick panel. Now on this particular speaker it's got a little tiny input here for the wire to go into. For that we're going to use a 18 gauge ferrule. It's a little bit long so we'll snip it a little shorter and it fits right in the hole. We'll tighten it up. Now we'll go ahead and dress up the wire. All right, so this is all set. Let's go ahead and get this in the car and screw it into place. Now we're gonna drill our holes for the speakers to screw into. For that, we buy really short drill bits. So the last thing we wanna do is put some foam on the top of this. Now you don't have to use a really thick foam on this one, just enough so that when you put the grill on, the two marriage up, and of course, you don't want them to rattle against one another, so that's really what this is for. This one is complete. We'll go ahead and put the grill back on. All right, now that we have this side done, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the process on the driver's side. It's gonna be the exact same way. You're gonna do the exact same thing. So today we're gonna learn how to take the door panel off of the Toyota. So the first thing you're gonna do is grab your plastic panel tool right here on the corner. You have one clip to just push it. This one comes out. On the top of the tweeter, you just pry it carefully because it has the three clips, sometimes they stay. So you see it right here, these clips stay. So I just grab like a big tool, put it back. Again, grab you plastic panel tool and, and the door handle, just go forward. And that's four clips, actually that's five clips. And that's a Phillips strip. It has a carpet right here, another Phillips strip. What I like to do is pop window switches. Just be careful. Now that you take it out, again, plastic panel tool, and start. Carefully. And this one comes up. You remove the cables and the switches behind it. And that's it. Now that we have the door panel off, make sure you grab all the clips that stay in the door. So you grab a 10 millimeter. And there you go. We have the six by nine out. Now I remove my window switcher because we have to roll the window up so we can do the treatment on the door. Now carefully, we're gonna remove these clips. Now the next step is we're going to remove this plastic cover. Be careful so you don't hit yourself. This one we're gonna put it back as soon as we finish. Now what we wanna do is because sometimes rains, people take the cars and dirt and everything, we just wanna clean whatever is in the door. So when we apply the roll kill, actually it's gonna stay. Right, so we have a roll kill right here. I always start with the new blade. In some of these cases, you can actually put like a big sheet of roll kill. Sometimes you have to cut it in little pieces. Depends on the door. And some of these doors, they actually have plenty of space. So you can use your roller and go and work your way around. And some of the doors that they don't have enough space, I like to grab my plastic, like kind of like an angle and just go on the corners. Actually works really nice. And then from there you repeat the process. So when you use the roller or the plastic panel tool, just be careful, don't apply it too hard because you don't want to dent the door. So just go easy.
before we put the roll key on the front we're gonna go and install the back of the fast rings this is the RKFR6 but we have to make sure the window doesn't hit the foam you're gonna go easy roll the window and you're gonna test fit it okay seems okay So now that we have the, the back of the fast rings on, now we're gonna grab our speaker adapters. For this one, we're gonna use the Metra 828147. And now we went and put foam in the back, foam in the front. We're still using the, the factory screws. And some of the speakers, you might have to cut this, these tabs. Some you don't, but it depends on the speaker you wanna install. So now what we want to do is find the polarity of the speaker, meaning find out positive and negative, because if we hook them up backwards, it's going to sound terrible. For this, we use a tool called the PT9A from Mobile Solutions, but you could do this also with a 9-volt battery just by touching the positive and negative leads to the positive and negative of the battery. If the speaker pushes out or away from the door, that's positive. If it pulls in, that's negative. This device will allow us to do it, though, with a little microphone in the top. So if we get red, that means it's backwards. So we'll go ahead and switch our wires around. And now we get green. So that's telling us that the purple wire on the speaker is gonna be our positive and the pink wire is gonna be our negative. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna go and solder our speaker. So now we have the speaker adapter mounted. We're gonna go and install the second piece of the fast ring. So before you peel off the back end, make sure you test fit it as the same as the first one so the window doesn't hit every time it rolls down and up. This one is perfect. Second piece of the fast ring gets on. Before we put the speaker, I like to just make a template. Okay. So now we can cut it off. So make sure when you're adding the treatment to the door that you don't go all the way over to the side here. You wanna make sure that the road kill stays on this side of the door panel. You don't want it to show past. That way when you put the door panel back on, it looks really ugly.
Now the last piece of the fast ring. It's gonna be in front of the speaker. And that's it. Now we can go ahead and put the door panel back. So next up on the list is gonna be this tweeter. Just go ahead and unscrew it. So the first thing we wanna do is pop the factory tweeter out. It's got three little clips that hold it in place. So a little flathead should be enough to get it out. Now sometimes you get lucky and the actual aftermarket tweeter will fit. So always try that first. And it is pretty close. There are some little ribs in here. We'll go ahead and remove those and we'll use our flush cutters. Circumference wise, the tweeter is gonna fit in here. It's just a little, little deep. So we're gonna go ahead and work it just a little so we can get this tweeter to snap into place. So with a little manipulation, we've gone ahead and made it so that this tweeter will fit right in there, just like that. What we need to do now is make a back mount, a piece of plastic that'll go over the back here that we can use to clamp this into place. For that, we're gonna go ahead and use some 16th inch. We'll router a couple of these out, and then we can attach those to the back here, and that'll hold that tweeter and lock it in place. We have our back plate made. We're just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of CA glue around this edge to lock this in place. Now while that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and put some foam inside of this mount because we've noticed that the tweeter sits pretty far away from this. And we wanna make sure we force all that sound into this panel, just like we do the fast rings in the door. We're gonna do the same here on the tweeter. And for those of you that are wondering what's the purpose of the fast rings or doing this, it's mainly so that we can force all that sound through the opening in front of it. So if we didn't do that, the sound could roll around inside of here and it wouldn't be all focused focus to this one point. That's why you use those. Make sure you check the front so that the foam isn't blocking the grill. And once you've got those all where it needs to be, go ahead and screw the tweeter back in. And then the last thing we want to do is go ahead and dress up our tweeter wire. All right, this tweeter is all set and ready to go. I'm going to get this over to Fernando so we can get into the car and finish that driver's door. Tweeter. Tweeter. Enjoy. Thank you. So is the tweeter in? Tweeter is in. All right, so that means the mid-range, the tweeter, the mid-base are all in. Mm -hmm. Everything has roadkill on it. Everything has foam. Everything is fast ringed up. We're good to go. Right. Now, we just showed you one side. The other side is exactly the same as I said earlier. So just mirror it. Repeat the process. That. Now we're gonna go ahead and show you what we use to power these, because like we said, the radio isn't enough to power these. And then we'll take a listen to them and see how they sound. To power this, we chose to go with the Kenwood XR600 6 DSP. Now what this is, is a six channel amplifier with four channels of output. This particular amplifier is gonna be running channels one and two on the driver's door, and three and four on the passenger door. Now we've also put rear speakers in here, and those are gonna be powered off of five and six. This amplifier is unique in that because this has a JBL system in it, it's controlled through an iData Maestro AR. It's all T-harness plugged in, and it's all controlled through the data bus on the car, which makes installation a lot more efficient. We don't have to go and replace the factory head unit. We can tie into the data bus. We get balance, fader, chimes, and all the fun things that we'd want in this vehicle, all piped into this aftermarket amplifier. We've also mounted our two crossovers here. We have the driver's side on this side, and the passenger side on this side. We've ran our two new wires up to the mid-range, and of course we've secured everything in location using this quarter-inch ABS panel that we've made that screws in via the factory bolts in the back. So now we have all our so now we have our speakers in. We know what's powering them. What's left, Fernando? Sound. That's right. It just magically appeared. So let's hop inside and take a little listen. Now just in case you were wondering, there's two P3 shallow mount 12s behind the back seat, powered off of the XR1000. Mm -hmm. One, which is the matching size to the amp you saw underneath that seat. The so that's what's driving yeah. the back. So we have 
We have a lot of sound in here, so if you hear some bass, that's what it's coming from. Now, one of the advantages of that DSP amplifier is that it allows us to do time correction and equalization for each speaker that we've put in here, so we can EQ this corner of the car, we can EQ that corner of the car, and this corner. Now in this car that has that factory 6x9, and even though we've gone to a 6.5, we went with a much higher end 6.5 that can play deeper yeah, lower, lower frequency, yeah. Then that factory 6x9. Right. So along with the roadkill on the door and the foam baffle around it, it's pushing all that sound into the car and giving us a nice, strong mid-bass. Now in this one we did the Flax, but this is actually the third time we've done this truck. We've done one with Morel Virtus, we've also done one with Focal Access. Very nice sounding all three of them. Mm -hmm. This nice three-way set going on in here with the mid-range high up in the dash sounds great and is a definite improvement than the factory. Now we've done a wide variety of subwoofers in there. We've done one P3 Rockford 12. Well, I wouldn't say a wide variety, but we've done both. We've done, this is the first one we've done with the two 12s in this particular model. We've done yep. plenty of Toyotas with the two P3 12s. But most of the time we do do the factory Rockford P3 12 shallow. Mm -hmm. It fits behind the seat easily with a grill. Yeah, with a grill. So definitely get a grill. night listen to this and we're not going to drag you through that yeah. you got to get on with your day just like we do fernando all what right, do we always guys. say at the end of these all right guys so if you like this video please subscribe share like you know where you find us facebook instagram and here in youtube that's right guys you have a wonderful night as always we'll see you later next time bye